Luke chapter 8 and in verse number 40. We're going to read 40 into 42. There is a, there is a beautiful thought there, 40 into 42. I'm just going to touch it with you a little bit this morning. Verse number 40 reads, And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Now, if we continue reading, we're going to get another um, incident, another occasion of Jesus' mighty hand at work. I want you to notice in verse 41, towards the end, the Bible says, And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and besought or begged him that he would come into his house. The little thought for a little while this morning is visit my house, Lord Jesus. This is Jairus' request that Jesus would go with him back to his house. I believe with all my heart that what we look here at the Lord, Je as, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and the request made by a ruler of the synagogue, we can get something out of that for our own lives. As a matter of fact, we could use the very own expression, visit my house, Lord Jesus. Because the same Jesus that visited Jairus' house would visit your house and my house just as well. Right. What I want us to notice here quickly is that there is a waiting crowd. The text tells me in verse 40, it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people received, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. I believe with all my heart this morning that that's one of the things that we're doing in that we are awaiting the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing as far as I'm concerned on God's calendar is the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ to take us home to be with him. I've been listening to great preachers. I, I listened to Dr. Clarence, not Clarence, Dr. Ralph Sexton Jr. <coughs> Excuse me. This week, or last week, as he dealt with what's happening in Israel. And looking at it, I, I was just fascinated to think, if all of this is just preparation for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, well, even so, come Lord Jesus. The church ought to be like that crowd here, awaiting the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But while the church is waiting, verse number 41 says, there is a need. People in the waiting crowd still have needs that the master could attend to. They are waiting for him. And here is Jairus. He is a ruler of the synagogue. A person's position does not exempt them from having a great need that only Jesus could attend to. A person's power doesn't, doesn't exempt him from having a great need that only Jesus could attend to. Right. A person's prestige does not exempt him from having a need on the inside that only God could attend to. Right. Jairus had a need. What is his need? The Bible says he has one only daughter about 12 years of age. Right. And she's lying home in a bed dying. Right. It is on that backdrop that Jairus is saying to Jesus, you've got to come visit my house. You've got to go home with me. Because if you don't go home with me, what I have home is going to die and I'm going to lose it. What I have home, it, 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 they're gonna, there's going to be imminent death if you don't go home with me. Jesus, if you don't attend to what I, I need at my home, I'm not going to be able to deal with what I'm going to have to deal with. You've got to go home with me. The Bible says he falls down at his feet and begs him. I know we can look at the reverence, we can look at the worship, we can look at his adoration, we can look at Jairus' understanding that Jesus is indeed qualified to go home with him to help him. 
The truth be told, Jairus makes a request and there is a crowd. Yeah. Why didn't he say, well, somebody else may have wanted it? Listen now, what Jairus is making sure he, 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 he makes clear that he's going to make his need known to the master. Yeah. It doesn't matter what others think, I believe he's going to make his need known to the master. And I believe I can say this to us this morning. Sometimes we, we, we think that our need cannot be addressed or attended to. Wow. The, the, Lord, the, the God we serve is able to attend to your need, your need, your need, your need at the same time. You say, preacher, why do you say that? In the t context of the passage, Jesus is just coming back from across the, the sea to deal with a man who had demons. He gets back into the area. There are people waiting for him. And while he gets back, there is Jairus asking him. While he goes with Jairus, if you go down in verse number 43, he, there is a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. What did he do? He helped that man across the sea, demon possessed. He's going home to help Jairus. But he also helped the woman who had the issue of blood. He attended to everybody's need. I want to make sure I say this this morning, that none of us would ever have a need that we cannot mention before the throne of God, or we cannot ask Jesus to go home with us and attend to, as he is fully qualified and able. Jairus says, I want you to go home with me, because if you don't go home with me, death is going to be imminent. When I, when I look at the Bible and I see those things, I kind of sometimes go into a little meditation and I have to go back to Brother Presley. One of the men who came out of our church and you know well is Brother Presley. Brother Presley would take a Bible verse and he would sit down over it for half an hour, an hour, one verse, watching it, talking, watching it, talking. And we've adopted that. A lot of us in church have adopted that. When you do that with this verse, the little word house comes, jumped up to me. I want you to go back to my house. And then my, my thought rush, rushed into, huh. He's asking Jesus to go to his house. But I could find other places in my Bible where the word house is used. And it, it is not necessarily the place that I dwell. Every house, however, could ask the same or make the same request. That is, Jesus, I need your visit. <laughs> Three houses or four houses that could, we could quickly use, and I'm watching the time, and I'll be done. Number one, you as an individual. Doesn't the Bible tell us the house in, 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 in Corinthians, or earthly, or earthly house of this tabernacle? That's you individually. You individually, that's, that's me. Well, do I need a visit from the Lord? You better believe I do. I really need him to visit me personally. Yeah. I need the Lord every time I stand up to, well, not just to preach. I need the Lord every single day of my life. Right. Right. I am so glad when I get to meet Jesus in person in the sense that I gave him my life and I knew the Spirit of God began to indwell me. Listen, I was ever so glad that God took up residence in me. Yeah. But I need him. I need his feeling. I need, his, I need him Every hour, the song says, I need him. I need him in my life. And not just me, I believe all of us can say, Lord, visit my house. Visit me personally. Visit me for revival. We sang it this morning. Visit me for restoration. Visit me to deal with whatever I've got to deal with. Lord, visit me in sicknesses. How many of us believe Jesus is still the great physician? I believe that. Visit me in my sickness. Just visit me. I need his visit. Not only the house of me, but there's a second house. The house of where, where I dwell. That's where Jairus used. He said, I want you to go home with me in the house that I dwell. In other words, in that case in where we are in Luke chapter number 8, Jairus himself didn't need the, sick, the, the attention. But there was somebody else in the, in the house where he lives. Let me ask you a question. Is all well in the house where you live? Good. Is everybody in your house doing well? Good. I'm afraid that that might not be the case in every, in every home. There are lots of us adults who are children are not where they're supposed to. There are a lot of par lots and lots of parents whose heart, whose heart hurt them because of where our children are. We don't want them there, but it seems that we cannot make any impact to have them transformed. Here's what I can say to you. 
You could ask the Lord Jesus to visit him. I was preaching in St. Vincent. In the northern, the second most northerly village in St. Vincent, a place called Ovia. And when I preached there that, 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 during the weekend meetings, a lady came to me and said, listen, her, and her, her son's name was Michael too, also. She said, I'd like you to pray for my son. She said, my son left home, finished high school, and went out into the forest to plant marijuana. And I said to her, I said, I am not, we're watching the mountains up there. I am not going to go to the mountains, and you cannot go to the mountains. But I'm telling you, there is someone who can go to the mountains, and they cannot stop him from coming to the mountains. We, we stayed right in the middle of the road, and I'm watching it as if it was yesterday. And we prayed for her son in the mountain. All right, I went home, and I went back maybe a year or two years after, doing another revival for Faith for Hope Baptist Church. And she came. She said, you remember me? I said, yeah, partially. She said, well, listen, my son came down from the mountain. Good. And not just come down from the mountain, he came down from the mountain, and he went and joined the St. Vincent and the Grenadines police force. We serve a God who could attend to what we cannot attend to right. even in our family. Right. But we've got to be bold and honest enough to ask him. Yes. Ask him to visit my house. Yes. Not just complain that my house is not in order. Ask him. Yes. There's a third house and that is the house of God. Yes. In, second, in 1 Timothy 3.15 he says, If I tarry long, yes. that thou mayest know how thou artest to behave thyself in the house of God. This is the house of God. Sure. We're not going to talk about behavior in the house of God. We're talking about asking for a visit. Yeah. Well, wow, wow. Yeah. I hope this church, I've seen you, I've looked at you, you've got great, but I hope we, 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 are, not, we are not complacent. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get to the place where we constantly ask God, visit the church. Yeah. Yeah. We do, I do not want church for its rituals. I want church for a visit from the master that he would attend to us. He would speak with us. He would challenge us. He would show us our wrong. He would show us where to go. Visit our church. Amen. And I've read about it where many of the older women in churches gone by had, and I figure out in a lot of black churches, had a mourner's bench. Yeah. And before the church service start, they would come and they'd line up on that mourner's bench. And they'd be moaning and groaning and begging God, Lord, help my preacher. Yeah. Church didn't start yet. Lord, preach my preacher today, Lord. Yeah. God, show yourself. And they're begging God so that the preacher, when he gets up to preach, would give them what God would want them to have. Amen. They're asking God to visit the church even before service started. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. Visit my church. And if, you want, if you're not... Uh, afraid to mention it the house of Israel yeah. that's not you right. that's not your family right. that's not your church right. that's the nation of, and that's a good time to mention it yeah. we need to pray for Israel now according to Psalm 122 right? right? pray for the peace of Jerusalem yeah. Israel is at war yeah. but the house of Israel is used, is used the word house is used there as a nation yeah. Israel needs a visit now a, strong, uh, uh, a help from the Lord in their battle but as a nation, if we don't say Israel, you could use America. Somebody needs to say, Lord, visit my nation. Visit my nation. Because if you don't visit, there are things that are going to happen, and the results are going to be catastrophic. Visit. So here is Jairus asking the Lord, visit my house. Jesus visits, and when you read the end of the story, he picked up the little girl and gave her back to her parents alive and well. Visit my house, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time we've had this morning. I pray you would help to strengthen this church, strengthen me, strengthen us. Father, cause that we would become very involved in wanting the work on your word. Visit us this morning. Strengthen our church. Strengthen this church. Together we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Preacher. 
Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.